Uh oh, we in the house, y'all. We in the house, Black Power. It's the Truth Hour with the General Sarasun Seti. Kick back, get your mind ready for some information that's guaranteed to be happy. All right? It's going down, family. Y'all know what time it is. KingSeti.com online marketplace. Official General Sarasun Seti DVDs, t shirts, hoodies, African and comedic jewelry. Holistic tonics and remedies, art and home decor for the family. Get on over there. Be we got a products that I know you're gonna love. You feel me? Cause my family out there that know what time it is. Uh is it is going down this Sunday. It's going down this Sunday, January 23rd. Uh the link is in the video description. Creatures from the Caucus 3, the fall of Cro-Magnum, the fall of Cro-Magnum, this Sunday, January the 23rd, the link is in the video description. If it's not there, I'm going to put it there. Before this, uh, the video is over, the uh, le lecture will be starting at 2.30 p.m. Uh, you know, that is a very, very powerful uh, uh, lecture. It's not for the weak heart at all at all tell you that straight up you don't just you know just don't wander over unless you know that's how it go down you know it's dealing with the origins of the crow magnum and it is like i say it's not for the light heart you have to you have to warn people when they step on this one right here i don't play no games and this is probably one of the the greatest lectures of all time, because in this, you're going to see the manifestation of what's inside of these Negroes. It's, when you understand what I'm saying, you're going to see what's inside of them. You know what I'm saying? That they venerating it, you know? And so a lot of people don't want to see this one because when they look in the mirror, they break down and cry. You know what I'm saying? Because the truth has been exposed because they icon that they venerate as the superior deity, the superior man will be brought down to the ground. You understand what I'm saying? Will be brought down to the ground. And so, family, make sure you hit that link. Be in the house. You can go to General Seti, uh, General Seti .ticketleap .com, Hit that, and you'll be in the house. Get your ticket and get that fire. Ring the alarm, General Seti .com. Ring the alarm. GeneralSeti.com, the most complete uh, website of the general. Over 800 uh, videos are on that website. All subjects too raw for YouTube. The shit that got banned off of YouTube <laughs> down through through the years. <laughs> you know the making the making of the Neanderthal series. All debates. All religious subjects, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, ancient Egypt, Ethiopia, India, black power, politics, and ec economics, that gas, the black woman is God series, you know, and just so much behind the scenes footage. Check it out. It's the black Netflix. You just ain't going to want to come up off of it, family. And so, and uh, make sure that you subscribe to all my YouTube channels. Make sure you subscribe. Matter of fact, I got to get on over there to my Patreon. I get You got to get on over there to my Patreon. Just did a very hard uh, live stream yesterday, early dynastic ancient Egypt. I got 150 exclusive live streams. You get to gen see the general, uh, 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 you know, it, it, it live, you know, doing it two, three notches up from what I do on YouTube. You see what I'm saying? Because... You know, everything is so touchy on, on YouTube. I had to take it to other platforms. So if you want to see the general raw than he ever been, then get on my Patreon. Any tier you're going to get fed. If you take, if you uh, get in the graduate advanced tier, you get to pay live streams for free. So not only do you get the creatures from the caucus for free, you get the other 150 live streams that's on that. You know what I'm saying? So that's where, you know, you get a, a real good deal on that. You see what I'm saying? And so, again, make sure you subscribe to all my YouTube uh, channels, General Seti, Sarasun Seti, and King Seti. 
You'll see all the links down on any one of my YouTube channels. You just scroll all the way to the bottom, hit them links. Make sure you hit that uh, notification bell and give all the videos a thumbs up, like. Now let's get off into the the priesthood of Amen, the mighty mightiest religious institution in world history, and I have to say that the mighty, you know, because niggas out here, you know, they thinking, you know, they don't matter, you know what I'm saying? They don't they don't matter at all, you know what I'm saying? And I can prove to you that be, beyond any doubt, this was the greatest, and we say religion. A lot of people say, well, the Egyptians didn't have religion. That's not true. They did have religion. You know, the basis of their religion was spirituality, though. But when you start talking about religion, see, spirituality is, you know, without regulation. It is, it, it is without, you know, you know, regulation is without, I can say structure. I can use the term structure. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people could just look out in the sky and be spiritual. But when it's time to, you know, you got institution. Religion is spirituality plus institution. You see what I'm saying? And that's why I don't, I don't have no problem in saying that the Africans invented spirituality and religion. Now I ain't going to say just spirituality, divine spirituality. Because being, you know, you can be looking up in the sky and you, you and motherfuckers say you spiritual. That don't mean you doing shit. You know what I'm saying? You could just be up in the goddamn looking up in the sky, spooking. You understand what I'm saying? And so we just, you know, we want to be clear that we were doing a, a, a scientific spirituality. We wasn't just up there, just looking up. You know what I'm saying? We was creating calendars. You understand? We was mapping the stars and constellations. We was applying the movement of the stars and constellations to our movements on the planet. You understand what I'm saying? And creating, you know, and things that was we we uh, correlated like floods and we the seasons. And we understood based off of when certain stars would appear that certain seasons was coming, certain seasons was leaving. We knew when the floods was coming based on the stars. And so this is structure. This is structure. You understand what I'm saying? Which were, which require institution and the element, the elements and ingredients of institution is writing. You first, you got to have writing. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to have some writing now. And not only do you have to have writing, a lot of people say, well, the Africans invented writing shit. They invented paper first. Shit, you you know you can't get nothing moving until you get some paper, and so they came. You know they put they you know it it developed, but you know they knew that they had to have a technology. You know what I'm saying to advance their thoughts. You know what I'm saying. That's why you know a lot of people talk about, and this is one of the most profound. Even though writing on paper existed before the new kingdom and see this is the things that they want to tell you is that the papyrus you talk about papyrus you talk about the sacred scrolls of egypt they say well you know as the as egypt developed into the new kingdom this is when you start to see papyrus paper and they say the oldest the oldest writing in ancient Egypt is the pyramid text. You see what I'm saying? Which is carved into some of the earlier pyramids, you know, at, at Saqqara, you see? And so, you know, I've been down into the pyramid of, of Teddy, you know, and you can see all of the, and it, it, it's just hundreds of thousands of, of, of glyphs on the wall. And the thing is, you're not going to make me believe. Any one of y'all out there can believe whatever the hell you want to believe. You're not going to make me believe you start carving in some damn stone before you start writing on paper. You're just not going to, you're not going to make me believe that. You see what I'm saying? The fact is, it would push institutions so far back into the ancient world 
that it would be, there's no way you could attribute it to no other people other than indigenous people of the land. Because you don't even, it clear, what was clear to me, because when I have to talk about institution, and that's the greatest thing that you see coming out of the priesthood of Amen was institution. You see what I'm saying? You can't even have re religion without institution. You see? And so the first things you start to see come out of this institution is sacred structures, uh, sanctuaries where the priests, you know, perform they, they, they sacred duties, you know, they litanies and they ceremonies and so on and so forth. You see what I'm saying? So it is in Africa where you start to see the first sac sacred sanctuaries to deities. You see what I'm saying? Which later was copied to become the basilicas, the copied to become the cathedrals, copied to become the mosques. Even in Hinduism, you understand what I'm saying? They got their concept, whether they want to believe it or not. And I've seen a lot of little, you know, you know, you got some Indian scholars out there. I ain't going to call no names, but at any given time, <laughs> he want to get with me. <laughs> Please do. You know what I'm saying? Please do. You know, I know they watching because I do a lot of videos on India. I know I see, you know, and they think I'm silly and that I'm I don't see what they do. I see even on uh, uh ancient aliens and shit that they'll come be and I'm telling you this. They go to areas that I know that people don't even talk about. You know what I'm saying? Just like they they went to uh Indonesia after I did the video and showed this pyramid in India. Indonesia. You could go to my end. I got the video, on, but I did it long before that. And it's a pyramid and it looked very similar to the pyramid in, in America, uh, Chetsunitsa. And they bring that up, but they don't go to them, them Stellas in the back that show that them brothers riding on them uh, elephants with afros. They don't, they don't go back there and, so, and show that. You know what I'm saying? So they, you know, you know, they, they, he trying to be slick. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to show that. You know what I'm saying? So that would clearly, if you believe that that is a, a replica of the one, then that just backs up exactly what I've been saying, what other scholars have been saying, that the whole Southern Hemisphere all around the globe was a, a Cult was brought civilization by the Africans. It wasn't nobody there. The South is us. That's us. That's us. These people you see there today, these people you see there today just been there maybe 2,000 years. You know what I'm saying? 2,000 years. In Asia, maybe 2,500 years at the most. I don't even give them that. You know what I'm saying? I don't even give them that. So you. Because, you know, you see him, you, you know, in 2000 years is a long time for for people that don't know no history. You understand what I'm saying? They're just like people that don't know what was in America prior to what you see today. You know what I'm saying? Shit, this shit only been here 200 years. You understand? 200 in a couple of years. You know what I'm saying? And so you, you can't assume. And so when you look over there, you cannot assume what you're seeing today has always been there. And so that's one of the clear things that we're going to talk about, you know, the most powerful institution in the ancient world. And let me just go and bring up the temple. I'm going to just show you this because I love dropping it. I love dropping because I know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. OK, so when you when you talk about the Egyptian temple, remember who showed you this, y'all. You see, you see it from the top. That's men that had have boo. OK, that's men that had have boo. You see it from the top. You see the sacred oblong. You see, you see the sacred re rectangle. You see in the front, you see the two pylons in the front. And then right here, you got the outer court. This is the uh, I, I believe they would consider this the inner court. And then in, in here, you got the hypostyle hall. And then you got the sanctuary in here. You see what I'm saying? Now, when you talk about uh, the mosque, let me show you the mosque. Let me show you this mosque. 
You see? You see the oblong? Now they got the they got the dome where the uh pylons is, but if you go inside, you'll see when you go inside, you'll see the co the colonnade. You understand what I'm saying? You'll see the colonnade. And as you move, even if you go in this uh St. Peter's Basilica, and you come in and you go all the way in the back, right there where you're gonna see the what they call the throne of of God. The throne of God back there where you see the sun disc, which I'll show you. You know what I'm saying? That's the sanctuary. That's the sanctuary. Okay, so here when you talk about, you know, we talking about it, and you can't go in reverse. You can't show where the Egyptian took shit from nobody, period, except the Cushites <laughs> that gave them all the knowledge that they had. You see what I'm saying? And they, the Egyptians are Cushites. But we talking about the one, the, the inner, you know, the, the motherland of Kush. You understand what I'm saying? Now, you're talking about, uh, let's, let's go, let, wait a minute, let me get over here to the cathedral. I want to show you this now. Where's the cathedral at? Do I got the cathedral in here? I know I got the cathedral in here. If I don't, that's a shame. But I can show you the front. I had the, uh, Wait a minute, let me calm down. That's not right. I got so much, it's ridiculous. Let me get the cathedral. So I can show y'all what they took. Okay, I might not have it in this one. I might not, but that's okay. I got other things that uh, take its place and still prove it. Okay, that's good. All right, I, I don't have it here. I don't have it here, but that's all right. What we'll do, we'll drop it like this. We'll drop it like this. There's no problem. So when you look at the pylon, you're talking about the, the cathedral of Notre Dame. You can see right there where they took from the Nubian, the, the Egyptian pylon of the, of the temple. You see what I'm saying? You see also, you see in the front, you see the, uh, the solar window that's sitting there so that God could shine down in his holy temple they say god is in his holy temple who is god who is god we got to ask that question you up here work you know looking at some anthropomorphic image of some cro magnum the goddamn neanderthal and you don't understand in the mysteries they understand that it's the s-u-n you see what i'm saying and that you are the chosen but everybody with some goddamn melanin and some wool on their goddamn head ain't divine got to be divine in your your consciousness divine in your walk divine in your movement you got to know you god nigga nigga you got to know that and if you don't know that then you are not god you may have the potential to be god but you're not god you walking around in the in the shadow of a damn caveman so how in the hell are you gonna be god let me show you something let me show you something look at this Remember who brought you this? Man, I was dropping this shit on these fools damn near 20 years ago. You see right here. You see right here. Wait a minute. Let me drop this in here. You see right here. You see right here. You see these. You see. Wait a minute. Am I, am, am I on? Let me make sure everything. Okay. That's good. You see right there. You see the Pope. You see oh the Muslim prostrating, putting his head on the ground. But where did they get that from, family? Where did they get that from? Didn't they get that? From the African. Now I see people didn't took it now. They didn't went up there. They didn't went up there and got it now. But y'all know who brought it. Been doing it too long. You know what I'm saying? Got this shit on lectures I did damn near 20 years ago. So y'all know who brought it. So we seeing. So when, when I say that the most pro mightiest and most profound, because I'm looking at the, the, the largest religions of today. I'm looking at the attributes and the characteristics of the largest religions of today. And so where, if they took it from the Egyptian, then that's profound. A lot of people say Egypt is dead. How is it dead when you can clearly see that all of the attributes that came out of the Nile Valley, especially the, during the priesthood of Amun, because the empire was at its greatest. You understand what I'm saying? And it was at that period that majority of the world, even though Africans had went out in colonies previous to that, it was primarily during the reign of, of the empire, which was uh, 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 
coalition of Africans, including Poon, including Nubia, Kush, including Egypt. Okay, and it was at that period that they gave them the semblance of some kind of institution. You understand? Some kind. They didn't give them what the Africans had. They gave them a starter kit. So when you're talking about religion, we talk about prayer. And so when you look at the prostrations of the Catholic, the Christian, the Muslim, the Hindu, you can see that their prostrations are first recorded in the Nile Valley long before any of them existed on the planet. So I'll show you what you can see the practice in Africa and ain't no, 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 no European civilization in existence. No Arab civilization in existence, and even the Indian civilization. I'm sorry to tell y'all, family, even though I understand that the Naga Kushites were the first to colonize Southern Asia. I have no doubt about it. And I get and I, I can point out those things that they brought to the continent of Asia that should be venerated by African people and held in high esteem. You know what I'm saying? But India is nowhere in comparison to ancient Egypt or Kush. They ain't even in comparison. I don't see why people and see and but you see these Negroes out there. You see these Negroes out there that try to, you know, they doing, you know, and they compare and, and act as if India is on and is and it's not. OK, when you do the research on ancient India and you look at their temple. Damn near 99 percent of all the temples in India were built during the AD period. Flat out. You understand what I'm saying? During the AD period. And they know that. OK, they know that when you talk about Egypt, when you talk about Nubia, the whole of the C civilization is in the B.C. period. The whole every temple you see is in the B.C. period. OK, 3000 years, you know what I'm saying? So India ain't even in no goddamn comparison to ancient Egypt. And don't even try to go up the river. Don't even try to go up the river. You can't even deal with Egypt. You can't even deal with the, the daughter of Kush. Let, let no one go up the river and deal with Mama Kush. Uh, you know, and deal with mo Mother Kush. You can't even deal with the daughter of Kush. You see what I'm saying? So we got to deal with these facts. And so you, you see the prostrations, you, you see the temples. Wait a minute. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this quickly. When we talk about the veneration where it says the Lord, the Lord God is a sun and a shield. So when you look at, you know, you look at these cathedrals, you look at these cathedrals, right? And then you go to Abydos. You see Abydos and you see what they call the, uh, the clear story windows, those are windows that's, you know, in the ceiling of the temple or the cathedral or the mosque that, you know, is, you know, gives the sun, you know, the ability to come down and shine inside of the temple. So you see truly who God is. See, it's not, it's not the answer. That's the fool you, nigga, to, so that you would not venerate the cosmos and not make the connection of who you are. Because when you understand that the sun is, and we understand that the cosmos is greater than the sun, but the sun is the most powerful symbol in our existence that gives life. You understand without the sun, there would be no life. There would be no light. You see what I'm saying? And so we, we understand that in, 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 in conjunction with all the other elements of the universe. We understand that. And we, when you break down the physical being of the African, you will see that all the elements of the universe are present in the divine African. I'm not just talking about any nigga. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I will not even attempt to say some shit like that. You understand when we talking about those who are activated, who understand their connection to the cosmos. You understand transmitting between the consciousness of the cosmos in him or herself. You understand? Understanding that there is no uh, 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 intermediate between you and, and the cosmos. You connected and you was born connected. It was the, you know, the religion of your adversary 
that sever that connection. Now, the African religion is based on spirituality. So the foundation of their religion is your personal connection to the cosmos. Nobody can intercede between you and the cosmos because you are directly connected to the cosmos. Your pineal gland is the, is the seed of the soul. You can make your own transmission. You can make your own, you know, uh, receive and send your information, your consciousness into the universe and make it reality. And nobody could do that for you. You understand? They can guide you and help guide you to be better at it. You understand what I'm saying? If they are divine and they walk and they, you know, and they uh and they purpose. You understand? But they can't intercede between you and the damn cosmo. And that's what these religions are. They're a bunch of traps because they say, well, you got to go through the preacher, man, to talk to God. Nigga, get out of here and get this goddamn plate with all this goddamn money that you're stealing out of the community. You understand what I'm saying? Get your ass on up out of here. The reverend, the, 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 uh, the father in there and doing confession. And goddamn it, he need to be on the side telling the world what and confessing to the world all the nastiness that he done. And you on the other side talking about father, I stole a, a you know, I stole a piece of bread yesterday. Yeah, am I going to go to hell? And this motherfucker over here he raping children. You know what I'm saying? Oh, father, I, you know, I snuck a quarter. You understand what I'm saying? You know, off my mama dress or some shit like that. You know, some shit that you shouldn't do, but it's small in comparison. So you going to the devil to, you know, put your sins on, you know, on him. And he got them the beast on the damn planet at this time. You know what I'm saying? So this is who you intercede with. The, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the mosque man. You know what I'm saying? You intercede with the, the Khalifa and the, and the imams and all of this shit. You understand what I'm saying? These is men. They don't have nothing to do with your connection to the cosmos. And so that's what the ancestors taught. And this was what was taught in the, in the craft of Amen and all other crafts. And yes, it, it became time where people began to, you know, lose the consciousness of that. And when they did, that's when they failed. And when they did, that's when they, but for 3,000 years, we know for the, for the most part of all those three, four, five thousand 5,000 years that this was the primary teaching of the craft of Amin Ra and all other crafts, such as the craft of Ptah. And so we, we, again, when we look at, and I'm going to move on out of that, I'm going to move on out of that, you know, uh, when we look at many of the, these so-called sanctuaries, even when you look at the two Tekkens or the two obelisks that sit in front of the Egyptian temple, you can look right there at the Taj Mahal. You see what I'm saying? You can look right there to the road leading down to St. Peter's and you see those same two Tekkens. The minaret is nothing but the Tekken. You see what I'm saying? The obelisk. you know, this is another stolen legacy of Africa. You know what I'm saying? And even when you look at, and I, like I said, I'm going to keep getting on this one Negro till he call my name, if he can, if he got the heart to. You know what I'm saying? Uh, not the little suckers. They don't get no, they ain't going to get none. I'm just talking about this one that's saying that, you know, African people, and this is a Negro, is making up shit. You know what I'm saying? We making up mythology about the old Mex. We making up mythology about, uh, 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 you know, the Nagas of Asia, even going to Egypt. He say we skip over West Africa and we go to Egypt. I don't know who he's discussing. You understand? Because we venerate West Africa. You see? And But I'm going to bust his head because we're going to talk about the West Africans that say they from Egypt. You know, they say, oh, we talking about Egypt. And that's all, you know, we skip. But no, we, no, we don't. I'm going to go straight into West Africa where the West Africans say they from Egypt. Okay? Busting their damn head. You know what I'm saying? Speaking it proudly. Say, we come up out the upper Egypt. We come up out the Sudan. This is West Africans. We talking about the Nock peoples that's in West Africa today. To say they come up out of upper Egypt. I seen the, I seen the chief say it. I seen the chief say it. You understand what I'm saying? And I can't wait to show that video. To let people know that our people know where they come from. When we so we when we say 
we all Africa. We not just no west or east or no north or no south. We all Africa. Every goddamn square inch of it is ours. Every square inch of it is sacred. You understand? And we, so, you know, we don't think for a second that we don't venerate any of our, because we Zulu. God damn it. We Zulu. We Nuba. You know what I'm saying? We Ashanti. You understand? We all of that. You know what I'm saying? We, we you know, we all of that. We don't, we don't care what our people name is. We that. If we there, if that's what nation we in, that's what we is today. God damn it. We in Nigeria, we Nigerian. If we in Ghana, we Ghanaian. God damn it, we in Sudan, we Sudanese. If we in Ethiopia, we Ethiopian. You understand? When we love our family, wherever they at on the continent, you see, we love them and everything in Africa is sacred. Ain't the smallest culture to the biggest culture because we know it was the collection of the smaller cultures that made the bigger culture. Wake up, nigga. We know this. We know this. Don't go to the twos and fews to get the information. Come on, come on in, you know, come to the ones that know better. You see, let's talk about, let's talk about the, uh, let's, let's show the, uh, the little Muslim. He over there with the, with the sun talking about don't worship the stars. <laughs> That's in the Quran. Don't, don't, don't prostrate to the stars, to the sun and the moon. And you go right in the mouth. <laughs> He got this shit in his body. His Quran talking about don't prostrate to the sun, the, the moon, and the stars. And you go right in the damn mosque and he prostrating to the sun. Like we don't understand. You see, you go in, you go into all the, the cathedrals and you see right there, you know, they in there singing their little, they little songs. Even the, uh, even when you talk about the, uh, the, the dome that you talk about the dome uh, uh, of the, the, the Roman dome, because this is the Muslim, you know, but they got it from the half of uh, half sun, the, the setting sun or the rising sun, you see? And so that's solar, you know, the, 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 the dome of the mosque is solar worship. You see, it's solar work. This is the effect that the Nile had. And they say, you know, don't do these things to hide the fact from you to hide the fact from you of where they took it from, you see? And so this was taken up out the Nile Valley, you see? Wait a minute. I don't have, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. Come on, let me go up some. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. We talk about the Holy Ghost, you see? Always shown as, as a, you know, as a dove. You know, and a lot of people say uh, that is hey, Ru. You know what I'm saying? But a dove is feminine. See? And a lot of people don't understand. When I was just talking about zoo types. That, you know, a lot of these zoo types are masculine and feminine. You see? And so a lot of people say the sun is Ra. But also Sekhmet is the, the sun. So you got the feminine and the masculine. And see, a lot of people don't understand is that uh, the falcon is also sacred to Isis, okay? Now, I'm going to take this out because this, this right here is going to be too hard. This is going to be too hard. This is going to be too hard. I got, you know, I had to do this on one of my paid live streams because, you know, it comes truthful, you know, or the depiction of what it is. So I bring it in. You know, now this is taken from uh, the Temple of Abydos, you see? And you see that, you know, you see the wings of the goddess I set. You know, those are the wings of the falcon. That shows her divinity. That shows her divinity. That's an aspect of her divinity. That means she's a sky goddess. You understand what I'm saying? And so when you go into uh, Abydos, and you go to the resurrection scene of the god Osiris, you see that Isis receives the holy sperm of Osiris as the falcon. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of people, see, they don't understand that. And that's another mistake of people that, you know, they use that little generalized 
because they don't understand the totality of the Nile Valley. They don't understand. They haven't masked it, the masculine and the feminine. So they say where the Holy Spirit is. No, it's not Horus. It's Isis. Because when you look at the, whole, the Holy Spirit, what aspect of the Trinity is missing? You got the son. You got the father. You see what is missing? The woman. And so when you look, you so when you talk about the Holy Spirit, is the dove is feminine. You see what I'm saying? That's a feminine zoo type. So the Holy Ghost is our set as the falcon. You see what I'm saying? That's what it is. And so this is another showing you, you know, major aspects of these religions. Major. We're talking major. Shit, they Holy Ghost is the damn near. More powerful, they say you can blaspheme anybody, but goddamn it, you you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, your ass is damned. You know what I'm saying? That just show you something. You can when you start pulling it up and go back to the origin, that just show you how powerful that African God is was to where if you blaspheme her, nigga, your ass is damned. You can't come back. You can say anything about the son. You can say about the father, but you bet not say anything whatsoever in any disrespect towards the Holy Spirit. Go look it up. Your ass will be damned to hell's fire if you do. You see, so we showing aspects here, you know, taking the most powerful institution, you know, on the, let me get out of this. Where that other one at? Matter of fact, let me come on down here. I'm taking from other. Now, another thing about this institution, okay, you see almond here, but as men. Now, men is another aspect of almond. And so you see right there Freemasonry. Freemasonry. You understand what I'm saying when you start talking about you know how they stole. And that's another thing. Let me bring that in. I, I got to bring that in because I, I was looking for that yesterday. You know what I'm saying? The Masonic Lodge. You know what I'm saying? The Masonic Lodge. When you talk about the Masonic Lodge, let me bring this in. Okay. And you look at Solomon Temple and you can see that is, it, it is taken directly from the, the uh, divine Masonic a uh, uh, blueprint of the Egyptian temple, the uh, the sacred oblong. You see what I'm saying? You can see bow eyes and uh, jock jocking. You understand what I'm saying? The two pillars sitting in the front, no different than the two pillars sitting in front of the the obelisk sitting in front of the Egyptian temple. And if you come all the way in the back, you see what I'm saying? You, right here, you got the holy place, and you see you see the uh the hypostyle, the colonnade around the holy of holies and you come all the way in the back you'll see the ark and it's no different when you come in the egyptian temple and you'll see the ark if you go and look up uh the temple of horus and you go into the interior look it up tonight i don't have it and you're going you'll see the ark of horus which is an ark a boat sitting in in the interior sitting in the sanctuary sitting in the holy of holies that's where you will see it OK, so this is where they would put the Ark of the Covenant in the, in the interior. And it says, why is the large floor? This is dealing because they say the lodge is constructed. The Masonic Lodge is constructed on the measurements of Solomon Temple. It says, why is the large floor an oblong square? Because of its measurement east and west. So it's east and west, 360 degrees, north and south, 180 degrees. But the thing is, they know damn well they ain't never found no damn uh, uh, Solomon Temple. They know they ain't found no T Solomon Temple. So where did they get it at? All you had to do is take it right here. Let me take it and put it in there so you can see it. You know, let me take it on up out of there. See? And so this is why. Say, why is the large flow <laughs> an oblong square? Okay, that come right up out the damn Masonic book. Why? Because y'all motherfuckers stole it up out of Egypt. 
You see what I'm saying? East and west, 360 degrees. North and south, 180 degrees. What is that saying? It's a rectangle. Okay, that's what it's saying. It's a rectangle, family. You see, let me break. Let's, let's move down. We're showing you the greatness. So we we talking about the very temples, you know. And so when you come in, uh, you know, so when you come back and you see, when you see right here, you see men. And I already spoke about the Ethiopian ostrich feathers that you see on the head dress of Amen, showing that he come up out of Kush, that he come up out of uh, uh, the interior of Africa, where the ostrich, the sacred ostrich, zoo type of the Nile Valley originates from. Now you see men or Amen, Amen and men is two aspects of the same, you know, are different aspects. Uh, men is the uh, aspect of fertility. He's always shown black, pitch black all the time, you know, and they know that it means fertility, have nothing to do with no death or nothing. You know what I'm saying? All the deities in ancient Egypt was painted black, Ptah, Anubis, uh, Tahuti, Amen. You know, I mean, you could just go on and on, you know, with it depicted black. Let me just show you these. You see, they were always de depicted black. Dealing with the cosmos, dealing with that cosmic melanin. You see what I'm saying? So it is no doubt where it came from, you know? And so when you see here and you're dealing with the Masonic order, if you look at when they take and he put his, you know, he put his arm up and you got the, you know, you got the short part of the arm pointing up and you got the long part of the arm straight. You see what I'm saying? This is when you testify, you know what I'm saying? And so you see men, you know, he, he, he up strong now. He resurrected. And this is where you get resurrection from, from re -erection. Respect. I don't want no motherfuckers out here with no silly shit. You know what I'm saying? We're dealing with a sacred science. Pata, hold me down. You know what I'm saying? Any type of, you know, boom. Get your ass, get their ass up out of here. Because we're dealing with a sacred science. I don't need no feeble mind, minds out there today. You know what I'm saying? Just listen and learn. You see what I'm saying? So you see the long arm is 90 degrees. You see what I'm saying? And then you see the flail over the, the upright arm, you know, and that's 60 degrees. You see what I'm saying? And when you take the 90 degrees and turn it up and put it, you know, in, 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 in collaboration with the 60 degrees, you see it makes the compass and, the, and, and, and uh, I believe that's the, uh, it's a, pro a protractor. That's what it is. You see what I'm saying? The square. You see the square and the, and the protractor. And so that's what it is, you know? And so this is what you, uh, you know, as a, as a one that's uh, constructing blueprints, you know what I'm saying? You need that protractor. You see what I'm saying? Or oh, a compass. I believe it's a compass. A compass and, and a square. You know what I'm saying? It, it, I'm, it's, it's a compass. You see, and so this is where they get the symbolisms from. You can see it right there in Africa. And so, but this is where you, you testify. You understand what I'm saying? You had to testify. God damn it. And, and you hold your oath. You hold your oath. You take your oath and you testify on the, on the truth of African history, of African spirituality. And God damn it, you go back on that shit. Then you know what happens. That which you hold and testify and take oath is what your ass lose when you defile that oath, when you defile that which in which you testify, you see? And so many of the great temples that came up out of, you know, here's the, te uh, the great temple of Karnak. Here's the great temple of Karnak. The greatest temple they ever constructed, period. And we ain't even talking. People look at Karnak and don't even understand that. Man, that whole area, Luxor, Karnak, even the temples of Mut, which is not no longer there because they didn't went over there and tore it down and use uh, the bricks and stones to build other shit in them, you know, for the, uh, the era. You know, they don't talk about that. You got Karnak, then you got Luxor. You know what I'm saying? Which is the, the grand lodge of the priesthood of ancient Egypt. This is where all the priests came to be raised. You understand what I'm saying? Into priesthood after they had done over 40 years of education. That's saying a lot. 
damn, man, you had 40 years, 40 years. You had to do 40 years in the Nile Valley. You see what I'm saying? In the Nile Valley educational system. And so then you got Moot. You know what I'm saying? And her sacred zoo type was the vulture. And so you seen, you know, un enduring the new kingdom, you see uh, 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 almost Nefertari, all the goddess, even Nefertari II, the divine wife of Ramesses II. And so you see that, you know, a, 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 a colonnade, a, 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 a walkway led from Karnak, this temple right here, one one uh walkway now this was a large walkway this was a grand walkway one led down to the temple of luxor which is further down than the temple of Mu, and one actually led to the temple of Mu. if you see right here it says avenue you see this will lead back to the temple of karnak so you see amenhotep the third had a temple inside and you can see the wall that was around it. You see Ramesses the third had a temple inside. Then you see the temple of Mut. And then you also see this uh, uh, sacred lake that was there. And then even on, uh, on the outside, you had uh, Kamutef. He had a temple there. And you see right here where you see up on the avenue, you see the bark shrine. And so this is where the goddess Mut had a bark. So this is where you talking. You start talking about the arc of this and the arc of that. And so what would happen is that they would have a sacred ceremony, you know, every year. They call it the Opet Festival. And I, you know, if if I'm not mistaken, you know, either Amen, I believe Amen, the Ark of Amen was carried out of his sacred, his sacred holy of holies. It was sailed down the Nile, if I'm not mistaken, and came to be with this bark of Moot. And this was the divine marriage, the divine love of Amen and Moot. You see, celebrated, the greatest festival of the year, celebrated by the ancient Egyptians. It's called the Opet Festival. You see? And so this is when you start, if you see these damn Christians and shit, and you see them how they, you know, and they be carrying they little, they little uh statue of uh, Mary and on the on on the ark, you know, and they carry her through the street. This is where they get this from. You see, this is where they get this from. And so we are showing and proving based on you know, when you talk about Christianity, you're talking about a billion people. You talking about when you talk about Islam, you're talking about a billion people. When you talk about Hinduism, you're talking about damn near a billion people. So when you can show that out of the three largest religions of today, and damn near every aspect of what they doing, institution, now, this is religion. We're talking about the, ind the institution. We're talking about the book. They would not have no book if it was not for the scrolls of ancient Egypt. We were the first one that had spiritual literature. You understand what I'm saying? Litanies, rituals, and ceremonies. We were the first ones. They know this to be true. And so this is where they got that from. We were the first one that had festivals uh, 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 for our gods and, you know, all through the year. We were the first one that had holy days and holidays. You understand what I'm saying? And then now today, we is we the authors and we running around with the pagans, the heathens and shit, celebrating with them about some bullshit. We ain't we ain't venerating the love of the African man and African woman today. We're not doing that. We on some dumb shit. Period. You nigga, you niggas ain't safe. You on some dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's real talk. That's the that's the beginning of liberation the love of your african woman and your children you ain't got that nigga you ain't no damn revolutionary you ain't even a man nigga you ain't nothing you was a bum you was a bum nigga that's where liber knowledge began that's where now that's where nation began and when you understand that when you bring that into you know, the purity of what it means, then you will see something, nigga. 
Motherfucker talking about teaching. I can't teach you to be no man, nigga. I can't teach you to have no damn heart in your chest. And because once, once you get that, it's like when the nigga plug, you know, when I hear motherfucker said he, when you go motherfucker plug in, <laughs> when you plug in and you know you a man, nigga, you don't quit. You ain't, you ain't here to learn shit, nigga. You supposed to know this shit. That shit supposed to electrify in your goddamn DNA and your cells what you is. And you gonna rise up without no nigga telling you. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm I'm here to, you know, to, in brotherhood, to, you know, we we put our swords on the tables as equals and, you know, as brothers and that we here to rise together and we know it take a brotherhood to do this. God damn it, but when it come time, nigga, to get out there on that battlefield, you got to swing your own sword. Did you help me? You know, like a little kid, like, you know what I'm saying? Can you help me swing my sword? You understand what I'm saying? Got to wake up today, family. Some of this shit just can't be taught. It got to be in you. You know what I'm saying? So as you see right here, this was the Temple of Mu. Aminotep the third, Ramesses the, the second. You could just see basically the foundation because they tore it down. They just, that's the good era. Tore it down. Just tore it down. You know what I'm saying? They could not respect. And then, you know, many of the, we don't understand that many of the sacred, sacred structures of of Egypt and Nubia have been torn down. They didn't fall down. They was torn down. And the stone was used in the mosque and this and that and the third of, you know, Cairo and, and, and Islam, you know, been torn down, you know? And so, you know, we got to understand this. So you see Amos Nefertari who comes in the, the reflection of the goddess Mu. You see, and you see in the 18th dynasty, you see the hairdress, the moot hairdress of all the 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 the, the royal the royal uh sisters. You know what I'm saying? You see them wearing the hairdress of the goddess moot. And so this is the divine wife of Amen. These are the empresses, these is empresses. And I tell people that they always saying Queen almost never her hands stretched across Europe and Asia. But they never say she was an empress because, God damn it, they ain't never had no emperor, no white emperor or no, uh, or no oriental emperor that had as much land and under their control as this one black woman right here. OK, who is the most spoken about uh, personage of all of ancient Egyptian history. I most never tarry. Somebody should tell people that. All of the great kings and queens that came from her loins. You understand what I'm saying? Her veneration went well into even the, the 25th dynasty. You see what I'm saying? Even into the 25th dynasties. Of, because when you, again, as I'm talking about Amen, you got to understand that the sister city of Waset. You hear that? Waset. You see? Set venerated. in. You know, in all of that, because he was a very uh, supreme deity in ancient Africa. But because he was, you know, a, a reflection of the mother Kushites, you know, he was, you know, demonized, you know, because, so that, you know, it would seem like there was some type of conflict with the, you know, the mother and the daughter, which it was never. You know, it's, it's always going to be a couple of fools you're going to fall out with. But the love was in unity. And you can see that when you study the Nile Valley, that this was a coalition of African nations all the way into the interior of Africa. And so you see Napata, which was the capital of Kush during uh, the New Kingdom. OK, it was the capital and it was the sister city of Waset. So when you go into Napata deep in Kush, then you will see the veneration. Also of Amun and Waset, I mean Mu, okay, Amun and Mu, and so you see that the, this de this great deity, his veneration went all over Africa, and Doctor Ben say he even heard Mu, you know what I'm saying, spoken of even over here in the Caribbean, you know that they spoke about the goddess Mu. You understand what I'm saying in some form or fashion? I got one of his older lectures where he talked about that. You see? And so 
this vulture god is a uh, moot went you know all over the world so that was during when egypt and kush had his greatest you know I, i'm not gonna even say it but I, I i guess i can say in the modern which is still ancient to us but in that time had the greatest uh influence on all the globe and so you see right there in why set you see uh and no i keep saying why set in the potter you see uh the uh the mountain of Amen, you know, that's called Jabri uh, uh, Jabri Jabril Barkal. It's a it's a mountain in uh in uh Sudan in Nubia, in Nubia, and it's sacred to Amen. And they say that this, you know, it looks like a a Uraeus, you know, a, the cobra, the naga, you know, that sits on the forehead of all the pharaohs. And so they venerated that mountain and called it the mountain of Amen. You see, the mountain of Amen. So we see that this was a, and you see the unity between the Nubians and the Egyptians. They didn't, they didn't just take it because it wasn't a deity that was forced upon them. These was actually Nubian deities that left the South, that went down into Egypt. And that's why they have so much reverence for um and, and move you see and so today you know we dealing with and you see the ram you see the ram which you know um was a warrior deity he was a warrior deity you see and you'll see um and when holding the kopesh which is the egyptian sickle you see you also you'll see when you know holding the kopesh which is the egyptian sickle that mean he coming to take heads most of the Egyptian deities, which people don't talk about, were warrior deities. <laughs> That's not brought up either. <laughs> Even because too many of y'all niggas just want to light a candle. And, you know what I'm saying? And put on flip-flops and shit and walk around with dashikis on. Y'all motherfuckers don't want to put on you no know, work boots and no motherfucker and get, you know, and get ready to go to war. The majority of all the Egyptian deities were, especially the supreme deities, were warrior deities. Well, the deities that, you know, venerated, you know, going to war with the enemy. And y'all don't bring that up. So when you talk about Amon, he was a war deity. Okay. He held the Kopesh. The ram is, you know, his zoo type because we know that the rams butt head. You know what I'm saying? So you know they ready to get busy at any given time. And so you see all these motherfuckers like the Dodges and this that ram tough and shit. This that and they got that shit straight up out of ancient Egypt. Most of them Dodge and Chrysler and all the forts were Freemasons that stole that information out of Egypt, showing you again and sh showing you that the God Amen was black, representing the cosmic melanin of the universe. You understand? Black is divine. Motherfucker talking about, you know, you got these silly ass fools out here talking about and do you see also Ptah was also venerated as black you know he was the god of the cosmos and so family let me see if i want to hit on anything else that's pretty much you know because this is a very long subject and i don't already did our hour for the family just to show you we got to get back home what does it mean we got to get back home and what am i saying when i say that you this is the original OK, nothing precedes that. Nothing precedes that. This is the original. Yes, we got ancient, more ancient culture. But when we talking about when it develops into what we call institution. Writing. Alphabet. Not just alphabet. Motherfucker talk about al we talking about the dictionary and the encyclopedia of every subject. We talking about libraries. We're not talking about no one book. We talking about writing paper. We talking about pen and ink because you can't have writing without the instruments to write it on and with, to write it with. You see what I'm saying? So here is where all instruments begin. You cannot have a religion without those elements that came up out of the Nile Valley. It was the Nile Valley that blessed the world with the element of institution institution you see what i'm saying the colleges and this that and the third and another thing and before i leave out 
also with that institution, and I'm going to drop it real quick so you know what institution is, so you know what came out of Egypt. You understand, when you're talking about a library, you're talking about mass production of literature. And you never hear that coming from no, no re these other religions. They got one book. See, institution is about mass production of literature. The priesthood of Amun and many other priesthoods of Ptah and so on and so forth produce mass literature. When you look at the documentation of how many papyruses have been found from ancient Egypt and Kush, it's in the millions. It's in the millions. They didn't stole millions. I mean, I literally so many of these tombs that they didn't dug up had a scroll. Even, even if it wasn't a, a magnificent scroll, if you could afford just a little, a little one, you know, if you didn't saved up a little money where well, you can get a small piece of a, to put in, they didn't found millions of scrolls. So we're talking about mass production. We're not talking about no one book. You understand what I'm saying? They never produced, they never had institution, no Hebrew, no Arab, no Greek, no Roman, no Hindu. None of them have mass production of literature that come out of the BC era. There's only one nation. One nation alone that has mass production of literature coming out the ancient world, and that's ancient Egypt. Now, what does that say? Did that mean that means you could ain't no one motherfucker wrote it? That means you had to have ma you had mass scribes. You had to have mass numbers of scribes to scribe those scrolls. You see what I'm saying? And not only did, were they scribing on scrolls, look at all them temples. Do you see some of them temples? I mean, writings everywhere. So you had scribes that wrote on scrolls. Then you had Masonic scribes that carved in the stone. You see everywhere. And then you look at some of them temples and man is writing everywhere. There's no one person doing that. So the whole nation was educated. You cannot go to Greece or go to India or go to China or go to the, the Israel, which is a fake nation or the air and find the whole of a people educated in that fashion. Nowhere. And so I state that and I state that without no debate. There's no goddamn debate. Let it be, let it be spoken to the, to the cosmos that there is no debate. You see, and you can let them lie to you all if you want to, you see. And so you have, in order to have mass numbers of scribes, you have to have mass numbers of teachers, okay? Mass numbers of teachers with mass numbers of subjects. When I say mass, I mean many. So when you're talking about astronomy, you're talking about cosmology, chemistry, ge geology, geography, latin longitude and latitude, language, religion, Mathematics, because you can see all forms of mathematics and all because you got to have all forms of mathematics to construct these temples that are still shocking the minds of the day. The, the math had to be as great as the architecture, the astronomy. You got certain uh, temples where, you know, certain stars appear in certain uh, chambers and you got the sun shining through certain areas of the temples on certain days. And so you align in these megalithic structures with the, with the, the cosmos. You see what I'm saying? This is, this is the greatness of our people. So this is the institution that, and this is what makes the priesthood of Amen. And when I say the priesthood of Amen, I also include the priesthood of Ptah, which was the, the great priesthood before Amen, which was as, as equally dynamic was as equally equally dynamic because all of the great pyramids were constructed. And matter of fact, Egypt came into existence under the the craft of Ptah. And so these were two equally dynamic one in the old kingdom, one in the middle, starting in the middle middle and new kingdom. They are they are both uh, 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 were in existence before the creation of Egypt both of them. And so 
again family i just had to drop them jewels tonight quit going to christianity quit going to islam quit going to hinduism and buddhism and this ism and that ism and go home go to the original there's nothing like the original okay there's nothing like the original created by your ancestors the greatest a uh, blueprint for success that we have today this is the general saras who said he's saying hey family make sure you hit them links make sure you get with me make sure you get with me now king general generalsetti.com my patreon general saras who said he and hit that link and get that creatures of the caucus family this sunday the 23rd be in the house because god damn it we're gonna have that flamethrower that day and if you got some negroes that just on the fence or they just don't believe bring their ass to me on that day and i guarantee you if they don't wake up they're gonna be in shock either or we're gonna put their ass in shock all right family this is the general sarah soon said he's saying hey arm yourself with knowledge bang on that wicked ass beast daily liberation through african education and confrontation black power